Thank you very much, Andrew, for that wonderful introduction. And it's such a pleasure to be here at the Telstra Business Women's National Awards Dinner. Uh, I want to acknowledge the Honourable Bruce Bilson, the Minister for Small Business, who I know because I've had many conversations with him, is a strong advocate um, for gender equality and for women's empowerment, particularly women entrepreneurs. So thank you very much, Bruce, for making the time to come today. I've got my twin sister with me here tonight. Bruce was saying, oh, maybe you should sub her in at this point. <laughs> Probably not. I also want to acknowledge Catherine Livingston, the chair of a board of Telstra and one of our nation's most acclaimed business leaders, uh, just a terrific role model for women all across Australia. So distinguished guests, Telstra award nominees, ladies and gentlemen, I remember sitting exactly where you were or where you are now 13 years ago. Actually, I was sitting in the farthest reaches of a room thinking, well, no one from Table 500 will ever win anything, so a couple of glasses of champagne, I mean, that's not going to do any harm, so be warned. <laughs> but the, uh, the National Awards dinner that, ni that night was memorable for many reasons, not just the champagne, I have to say, although the champagne's pretty good, but for many reasons, one of them deeply personal. Because at the time that I won the awards. Uh, it was a time when my mother was battling leukemia. She was in hospital and on chemotherapy. And I'd been to visit her at the hospital before rushing down to Melbourne uh, to the awards dinner. I had a mixed emotions because I felt a deep sadness that she wouldn't be with me at a moment which was a special moment in my life. And as I was getting dressed for the dinner that evening, there was a knock on my hotel door. My husband, who I have to say is still working out what he did in his last life to have to be married to the Sex Discrimination Commissioner in this life. <laughs> That's a whole nother story. We won't go there at the minute. But my husband raced to the door thinking it was room service. But no, it was my mother dressed in all her finery with her chemotherapy beside her. Yeah. It was such a great moment because with support from the hospital, with intense planning, they'd devised a scheme to have my mother in Melbourne so that she could support me in one of the most important moments of my life. So thank you, Telstra, for giving me a time that I will never forget. The Telstra Business Women Awards have had such a huge impact on so many women across our nation. For me, they have provided a platform from which I've been able to build an authentic and distinctive voice. The awards helped me understand that the structural and the cultural barriers that I was experiencing in my industry, which was law, were common across so many industries, barriers that were experienced by millions of women all across Australia. But I also saw what achievement looked like, achievement of women in so many different sectors. The awards reminded me why women's voices matter and made me, on that night, determined to step up and work with others to create a more gender equal Australia. Because yes, gender equality is possible. Not only is it possible, it's pivotal to building a prosperous and inclusive and compassionate nation. A nation where violence against women has no place. And as Andrew said, uh, just yesterday, uh, we um, marked the International Day of Elimination of Violence Against Women and Their Children all across the world. Yesterday heralds, heralded 16 days of activism and I declared as part of my activism that in every speech I gave in the next 16 days, it didn't matter who I was addressing on what topic, I would include a story about domestic violence. So I'll do that tonight. Do you know that, almost, that, that there are more women living in intimate relationships characterised by violence across the world than there are malnourished people? That's almost one billion people across the, uh, one billion women across the globe. And here in Australia, 1.2 million women 
are either living in an intimate relationship characterised by physical violence or have recently done so. But what I have come to understand is that small actions can have huge impact. And in fact, just last year, I elected to give the Vincent Fairfax oration on the issue of violence against women. One of the women who attended my speech in Sydney, she rang me the next day. She was a manager in one of our largest banks. She had a staff of several hundred. And she said to me, Liz, this morning I decided to do something different at our staff meeting. I called the staff together and I said, I want to talk about domestic violence. I want to talk about the prevalence, the nature and consequence, and why it is a workplace issue. And she said, I'll start by telling you a story I've never told in public before, and that's my own story of violence. So she spoke about growing up in a family terrorised by violence. She talked about taking her mother to the hospital, bleeding, the silence and the shame. And she said to her staff, I want you now to do one thing. I want you to go and tell my story to every person in this bank because in so doing and in telling my story, I hope I give license to others to tell theirs. So when I see change happen, because that bank is now leading on its response to domestic violence, when I see change happen, I see it in the small moments. Because on occasion, when presented with the enormity of a task, it can be easy to lose faith, to lose faith in the possibility of change. That's why awards such as the business, Telstra Business Women's Awards are just so important, because they reveal the depth, the breadth of women's contribution to all aspects of our nation, and indeed to business, to building a strong and sustainable economy. Congratulations to all the state and territory winners here on your remarkable achievements. I just feel so privileged and honoured to be able to join you tonight uh, to really listen to those stories and to celebrate with you. But like you, I remember that with great acclaim comes great responsibility. A responsibility to speak when I see unfairness, a responsibility to disrupt the status quo, to create opportunities for other women, to raise my son to believe that equality is the only path, to have courage and compassion and to stay connected to my heart, and finally, to believe that if gender equality is my birthright, why would I accept anything less? Thank you very much.